Hey guys, what is up? What's going on out there? That's right, Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Another episode, What's the Right Shot? Number 321, 321. Hmm, good looking number there. Uh, obviously, Doubles Point, uh, Mission Hills Country Club, a couple years ago on the grass courts. And this shot choice, I love. It's just because of the prior two shots uh, uh, before this shot that I think really set this up. So uh, we're about to get into that. And then the other thing too is I got a short message for you today that's titled, There's Some Real Magic In, dot, dot, dot. And um, I, got, uh, I got something I want to I want to run past your little noggin. So in the meantime, here comes uh, this episode of What's the Right Shot. Well, all right, let's get into this episode of What's the Right Shot. And we got the great Mark Vines on the far side as the server. And uh, what we are going to see here is a series of what I think are really good shots. And I'm going to stop it right here where we've got the kind of the episode image identifier was right here. And if you hear the laptop fan just going crazy in the background, my apologies. Um, so I stopped it here. What do you think is the right shot? You know, what are you doing here? Are you going back in the middle? Are you going to lob deep? Are you going uh, up the line in terms of the alley? Maybe you're going right back at one of those players over there. Uh, what do you think is the right shot? What shot would you play in this situation? If you want to let me know before I show you the answer, go ahead and pause right now and put that down in the comments area and then come on back. Well, all right, here we go. Let's take this from, let's take this from the top. We, we don't need to see the miss first serve again, uh, but let's take it. Boy, this fan is just going nuts here on the laptop. Hope it's not too distracting. Anyway, out wide, out wide serve, which, man, I think is a good second serve. This is great. I mean, this really kind of gets the returner off the court, but how about this for a return to serve where, where you slide this thing with your backhand back cross court. You know, if Mark's partner wants to poach, mm, have fun with that. That's not going to be any fun at all. And this thing lands beautifully in front of Mark, and yet he gets the racket head down. Hard to see from this angle. We're so far away with the camera. He gets the racket right behind and picks up this half volley like ho-hum, no big deal, plays it back, comes on in again, or come, comes on in further, Get some great court position. And how about this, right? This ball is played right between the two players. And Mark's not sure if he's going to get it. His partner's going to get it. So he takes it over, gets it, and now here we go. And here's the ball that was played. I mean, Mark Vines has just played three, I think, great shots. That out wide serve. The pickup half volley. The not sure if I should take this ball in the middle volley. And plays it deep enough, has good court position, and then you got to deal with this, right? Where there's a little roller, a little roller over into the alley. And that's all you have to do at that level to win a point against, uh, against Mark Vines. That's it. So um, that's always an option. This shot choice to me, um, I love because... I always feel like worst case, worst case with this roller into that alley cross court is that you get it down in front of your partner, right? I, I never think of this as being a winner opportunity, but I do think of it as being a ball that I want to get down and maybe pull that player out wide, but get it down in front of my partner and give them an opportunity to do so. And I'm not sure that was the shot in the, the, the returner's intention here was to hit a clean winner. Sometimes it just happens that way, right? Your intention could be, I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll this. I got a two shot mindset. All right, I'm going to roll this thing over there cross court because maybe he's looking for another ball in the middle. Maybe I got a little space 
and uh, and sure enough, it ends up without any real intention of being so, but it ends up being a clean winner. So look, we're going to take this point all the way from the top of, we're not going to go through the first serve, but we'll go through the second serve and take it from here and, uh, and watch this point in real time. Okay. Tough. And there you have it. There you have it. Um, all right, look, guys, I got a quick message for you um, about some magic that uh, I want to discuss with you. Here it comes. Well, all right, hope you enjoyed today's episode of What's the Right Shot. And uh, yeah, you know, there's some real magic in, and this is something that, I don't know, I just consciously do. And it just, when I think about about doing it, what happens is all other foggy stuff that I might have in my brain in terms of shot choice, in terms of swing tech and all that just kind of gets eliminated. And for me, it's so simple. It's ridiculous. And why we don't habituate it more and more, I don't know. I try to think about it every day when I'm on the court, whether I'm practicing or playing a match. But look, there's some real magic in exhaling right through contact with the ball. And for me, when I do that, like I said, it takes away a lot of swing tech thoughts. It takes a lot of away a lot of sort of trusting issues. Gosh, am I going to make this shot? Shot choice? Did I choose the right shot? All that kind of stuff. When I just think about, I'm going to consciously exhale. Whatever it is for you, I don't. I don't go with the loud grunt. I'm not into that. But um, for whatever works best for you within the rules of the game, do it. And I think what you're going to find is that two things, two really good things happen. Number one, yeah, you get some real clarity uh, in terms of not having a bunch of other thoughts going on in your head. But the other thing for me too, when I when I exhale, it actually, it lets out energy. It lets out energy through the ball where I don't feel like I have to muscle the ball over. It just, it's just a really relaxed type of energy. I don't know how to really say it other than that. So Next time you're on the court, think about this. In your warm-up, make, sh make sure that you're exhaling right through the ball, and I think um, that you'll find some real magic in doing that. All right, guys. Um, hope, you day, hope, hope, day, bit. hope you enjoyed today's episode and this short little message. And uh, as always, come on now. It's time. We have to get out there. We, we, us, you, me, everyone. We got to help someone else. Have a great day, guys. I will see you again next time.